The search for an ideology coincides with a search by youthful Mexican-American individuals for an identity in the spectrum of American protest. Rudolfo Coqui Gonzalez, an ex-boxer turned civil rights activist in Denver, Colorado, answers that need by digging deep into the past. Last year, he founded El Santo de la Cruzada, a self-help community based dedicated to a cultural renaissance for the Mexican-American. This is our symbol. It's an Indian mother, a Spanish father, and a cat with a mustache facing us. On one side of us, we predate Plymouth Rock 20,000 years. On the other side, 300. Yet we're told to identify with what's coming from the Eastern Seaboard. But again, you say, well, that's past. It has nothing to do with us today. But it has a lot to do with us today. It has a lot to do with us with the culture that our people have had is going to the graves with our old people. So that we have to start relating to who and what we are. It's not alienation, it's, it's movement, self-determination. The Japanese, they have no political power, so to speak, because they're small numbers, yet they have economic control of their life and what they develop, they, it, it goes into the majority of society, but the money comes back into rich new blood for themselves to develop their own people. You know, this is because they control their church, they control their social life, and, the, and their, whole, their whole living together. And, and I don't hear anybody saying the Japanese are alienated, but the minute a few black people get together, they say, man, those guys are bad. When Mexicans start to get together, they say, well, gee, they might think I'm a bad guy. You know, the hell with what they think. Because what they thought has created all the problems for the mass of our people. There wouldn't be any racism if his folks and his forefathers hadn't provoked it. There wouldn't be any discrimination if his forefathers hadn't provoked it and built upon it and created a status quo barrier to all other people. As we watch the black move, as we watch the radical Anglo move, and we say, you know, where are we going? We've got, we've got it all right here. We don't have to go. We just have to preserve it and build it up. We have to defend it. We have to take care of these things that are important to our people. It's right here. It's right here in my hand. My feet are on the ground, and this is who I am, and I'm proud of it. We started the Crusade for Justice about three years ago. It started off as a movement uh, on different issues that uh, took place in this city, police brutality, other issues. And we started teaching the, the basic philosophy of where we're going to go. And we created a tight unit of people, a family unit, you might say. Not all family, but... This is what we've become. And uh, from this, then we, uh, we set a base, and we're strong. Uh, it's very much like revolution in an underdeveloped country. Fifty people inside a revolution. <laughs> so that we have developed people from any ages from 10, 11, up to 64. And they'll sit to some guys are dropouts. Some people are college students, uh, housewives uh, that can relate to what we're talking about and, and sit through uh, three, four hours of this, of this meeting. Of course, they also then interrelate and interdiscuss something that they won't do or wouldn't do at school or wouldn't do in the the society because there's nothing there for them to identify with. Holding for, for what, what's going to be given to him or a service, it's part of him. It's his, and he knows it. Like Gorky says, we didn't get any government funds, we didn't get any foundation money, we didn't get any angel money. This was money from our own people. People like Julia, myself, Steve, John, and many crusaders who are dedicated for a better way for our people. I think this is the most important thing in our life, to be able to have pride in what we are. We have this, but we have to instill this within our own people. Now the kids are learning different. They don't have to take abuse from anybody. They're as equal as anybody else in this God's country. Our kids are just as smart as anybody else's kids, given the opportunities. And we wouldn't be fighting so hard if our, if our parents before us would have done what we're doing for our children.
but they always told us this is the way they are, this is the way we have to accept it. When I would come home and tell my dad the I was brought up in Brighton, went to school there, they were very prejudiced against Spanish and Mexican. And I'd come home and tell my parents and they'd say, well, this is the way it is, you have to accept it. We found out we don't have to accept it. And our kids are not going to, we're not going to settle for this for our kids. We're going to work with them and teach them our new way of life, which is our right. We have just as much right here as anybody else in this country, or more, because we funded it. There's a vast ignorance about the Mexican, and consequently there's a, there's a myth that the Mexican is pliable, he is non-resistant, and that anybody can do anything to him that anybody wishes. Well, this isn't true. But now that he's become an urban Mexican, and now that there's a more numerous generation of uh, Mexicans who have gone to school, many who have even gone to college, uh, who are observing what's happening to the urban community, uh, the tensions within the Mexican community are increasing, and they show themselves in the current protest movements. These are reflected in the student protests. They are reflected in the in the discontent with the educational conditions, the school systems, and they're going to be make themselves manifest in more ways than even these. Last year, the parents of East Los Angeles, where some 700,000 Mexican Americans live, stormed the local school board for four consecutive days, picketed, slept in nights, protesting the demotion of a young Mexican American high school teacher who had been accused of organizing a strike. The issue was more of a culmination point because the parents had long been complaining about the school system's lack of interest in Mexican culture and history. This, they believe, was the basis of the dropout problem. Two predominantly Mexican-American high schools in East Los Angeles registered dropout rates of as high as 53%, with very few of the students going on to college. It's not so much Mr. Castro, it's the issue, what the man means to every teacher. Academic freedom, shall we call it, to a Negro, to a Mexican, to an Anglo, shall we say. You are here deciding for all these teachers. The board voted to reinstate Sal Castro, a small but important victory for La Raza. No? Reverend John. Yes. I'm a big 